morning, everyone, and welcome to Hatfield Congregational Church. Wow, that's really coming out loud today, isn't it? Is, that, is it okay, though? It's not distracting? All right, good. All right, so let's begin with our announcements. We offer our thanks for the beautiful flowers here today. Oh, they're in the back. They're also our ushers. So uh, Bernie and June, we thank them for the flowers that are offered today. We also thank them for our chat and coffee that will be this morning right after church. And uh, as you know, we also have our annual congregational meeting. So there's also going to be more than that. There's soup and potato soup and all kinds of delicious stuff out there to help us get through that meeting. So we thank everyone who brought in stuff for that. The Relay for Life fundraiser is going on, and uh, that's going to be here before you know it. And we are selling, what is it, $5 or $3? $3 for a... So that's what the five, that always throws me. $3 for the bag of the peanuts, the $5 uh, off uh, your bill, and a free appetizer. So if you'd like to help the American Cancer Society, uh, please see Mary over there. That's a, that's a great deal right there. Also, in the entrance, the front entrance of the church, you, I hope you notice there's a box there. Uh, Rerun Shoes, and there was a little notice in the, uh, in the newsletter. Rerun Shoes is a nationwide effort to get used shoes that we don't wear anymore, but people in Africa would love to have them. Um, and so it's right out of here in uh, Northampton, I think in Florence. And uh, they, once we get our box full, we'll just uh, bring it over to them and they will ship them off to people in Africa that would love to have our uh, slightly used shoes. And so if you can bring in any old shoes that you don't need anymore, uh, that collection box will be out in the church entrance, uh, hopefully until we can fill that baby right up. Also, uh, the Board of Deacons will meet tomorrow at 5 p.m. And our school, our Sunday school is collecting for the Super Bowl of Caring, which is a nationwide Christian youth group uh, fundraiser where they try to collect food uh, in conjunction every year with the Super Bowl. And it all goes back to a prayer that says, you know, basically we have so much food that we can have all these snacks and treats and etc. on Super Bowl, but there are so many people around us who don't even have enough to put on their dinner table. Uh, so on Super Bowl Sunday, which is next Sunday, and I heard one of the teams is, who's in that Super Bowl? Who is it? I forgot. Is it the Redskins? No, 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 Philadelphia? I forgot who it is. Some, some, some team out there that's important is going to be playing in the Super Bowl. So next Sunday, if you're getting all excited about the Super Bowl, think about the Super Bowl of caring as well. Also, a Kindness for Kids Valentine's Breakfast will be held on Saturday, February 9th, and that is to benefit the uh, children here at the elementary school. I have the tickets. If you would like to purchase a ticket, they are $8. Seniors are $6. Um, and so if you'd like to purchase one of these tickets, which is a donation to Kindness for Kids, uh, please see me after church today. Um, and also they will be available um, online. So all you have to do is go to the newsletter, click on the link, and you can go purchase these online. Also, um, the flowers today, I'm sorry, I forgot to read this. The flowers today are from Bernie and June, and they are in honor of all of the people working so hard to keep our church so beautiful. Thank you. And that's from the Lamprin. So we thank you very much for that. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Wow, not a single one today? And Anthony's right there with the, uh, the microphone in case anybody needs it. No, no announcements. All right. Okay. So then we are going to move on. Right? Nothing? Okay. So the prelude for this morning's worship is Flower Burial Song. And our guest musician is down here in the front, Min Chi Wang.
Thank you very much, Vinci and Anthony. That was beautiful. So whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you got to know by now that you are welcome here at Hatfield Congregational Church. So let us move now into our bulletin to our call to worship. Let the ears of all people be attentive, for the heavens are telling the glory of God. Day and night, God is at work among us. We are drawn together by the Spirit's quiet promptings and loving summons. Hear once again the word of God, refreshed with each new day, each new encounter, each new experience, each new insight. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us now join together in our unison prayer. On this holy Sabbath day, we come together to discover a deeper meaning and purpose in our lives. We look to your word, O God, as a source of understanding. We look to each other as travel companions on our spiritual journeys. Revive our souls, Jesus, so that our hearts may rejoice in your presence. Cleanse and enlighten us with the Spirit's truth. Liberate us from self-imposed limitations so that we may become what you would have us be. O Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. All right, we get to now raise our voices to God. Blue hymnal number 530, I've got peace like a river. I think you all know that we are deep into uh, the flu season. Uh, people at my other job, they've been dropping like flies with stomach bugs and everything. And so if you'd like to share the gift of peace with just a fist bump or just a peace sign, whatever you want, but just so that we know that we're sharing that gift of peace with each other.
our young people could please come forward. Okay. Oh, you chicken. Are you going to stay there? Okay. All right. How you doing, guys? I heard somebody was cold but won't wear long pants. Yeah? Okay. So, you guys are going to be downstairs, but we're going to hear a story about Jesus today in the gospel. And Jesus, you know, for the longest time, I think he had a struggle with who he was and what he was supposed to do. And when he gets to be about 30 years old, he goes down to John the Baptist because he's just, he's in a quandary. He knows that he's called by God to do something, but everything in Nazareth just isn't enough. And so he goes down, he travels about maybe 70, 80, maybe 90 miles. He goes out into the desert. He meets this guy, John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is just a little bit crazy out there. Uh, he's doing all kinds of weird stuff and, and he's uh, yelling and screaming and saying everybody's going to, you know, you gotta, you got to change or else you're going to be you know, in a lot of trouble. And so Jesus goes and listens to him. And then Jesus has this moment of revelation, and he realizes that he is God's special son. And God says, I love you. And that just freaks Jesus out. He runs out into the desert by himself for 40 days, and for those 40 days, he's trying to figure out what it means that God loves me in a special way, and what am I supposed to do? So by the end of that 40 days, he's kind of got an idea of what he needs to do, and he goes back home but he's not the same person anymore. And when he goes back home, every Saturday, every Jewish Sabbath, he goes to the synagogue. And they're expecting to see Jesus the carpenter. They're expecting to see the Jesus that they've known for 30 years. They're expecting to see Jesus who's just gonna sit there, maybe get up and do a little help with the synagogue service, and then go sit down, and then everybody's gonna go home and have a nice breakfast. Instead, Jesus gets up, and he reads from their, their scroll, which is their holy scripture, and he's reading from this prophet Isaiah, and it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and all of these things about me, 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 and then everybody thought he was going to roll up the scroll and go sit down. Jesus goes back to his seat in this synagogue, and he says, today, this prophecy has been fulfilled in me. Now, can you imagine any of these people out there you know, we see them every Sunday. Can you imagine if one of the, or you know what, let's, let's change, let's, there's Anthony. Look at Anthony. He's got that beard like Jesus has a beard, okay? So let's make believe that Anthony is Jesus, okay? Every, every Sunday you come to church, he's either here, he's over there, he's, he's doing, he's running around, getting the choir to sing, all that kind of stuff. So we're used to that Anthony Jesus, right? Can you imagine if Anthony said, hey, today I'm the Messiah, what would you think? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. What, what, you don't know how to process that. So Jesus in this synagogue, the one that they've known for 30 years, he gets up and says, I'm the Messiah. And nobody knows what to do with that. So all I want you guys to think about is sometimes it's okay to be different. If Jesus wasn't willing to be different at that time, we would not be here right now. So Jesus was very brave that day because for the longest time, he would not do anything different. And all of a sudden, he stands up and he, makes the, he becomes the center of attention. Sometimes God says you need to do that. Sometimes we have to be brave enough to stand up and be different. Sometimes in a world that doesn't really know a lot about Jesus, doesn't know a lot about church, doesn't know a lot about God, we have to be willing to be different and stand up for all that stuff that God would have us do as one of his beloved children. And the other thing is let those people who are different be different, okay? It's not our job to tell them how they're supposed to be. If somebody is different, we let them be different because that's their special role in life. All right? So you guys go. Well, don't rush off that fast. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.
Thank you much. So it's now time for our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. I don't know if you saw in the news or not, but um, they're in that last uh, bitter Arctic cold that we had uh, last weekend. Uh, two homeless people in a tent behind the McDonald's on the Mohawk Trail up in Greenfield froze to death. Um, so that Arctic air is coming back again this week. So um, I'd like to begin with a prayer for all of those homeless people. Um, you know, when, when we're inside and you just look outside and see how cold it is, I can't even imagine how they live out there without any protection. Uh, so let's try and keep them in our prayers, um, especially as that Arctic cold is coming back. Also, today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Today. today is the anniversary of the Allied liberation of the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp from the Nazis. Holocaust Remembrance Day calls upon us to remember the six million people who were exterminated by the Nazis, and it also calls upon us to fight genocide in our world still today, and to be on guard against those people and groups who would deny this past tragedy and even wish to repeat it. We also offer prayers of thanksgiving that our government is back and up and running. So for all those government employees that didn't have a couple of paychecks and for all those people that were served by those agencies, we're just glad that the government is up and running again. We also offer our prayers for Charlie Kellogg. Uh, he was at Cooley Dickinson Hospital and is now back at Linda Manor continuing with his recovery. We offer prayers for our own Sue Gilman who is undergoing special treatments for her cancer. We offer prayers for Glenn and Denise Wagner and their times of special need and healing. Prayers for Muriel Kjobovic. Prayers for Lynn Omasta, she's treated for her cancer. Prayers for the health of Jean Sheehan. Prayers for the health of Johnny Benson. Prayers for our Bill Pometer, who is um, back home and still recuperating from a stroke that he had. Prayers for Sarah and Jimmy Pigeon and their unborn twin girls. And are there any other joys or concerns or celebrations? And Anthony is at the ready with the microphone and like you, in case you'd like to share. No announcements, no it's prayers. It's me, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> wow. All right. Well, we hope we have a, a successful annual meeting. I will throw that in there, but thanks, Anthony. So, oh, you have an announcement? I do. So part of the reason I invited Minchi here on this Sunday is because in about nine or so days is Chinese New Year. This year it falls on February 5th. And what year is it this year? It was Year of the Pig. Last year was Year of the Dog. Technically we're still in the Year of the Dog. So let me teach you a little uh, Chinese phrase that you can greet your friends and family with. Repeat after me, Xin Nian. Xin Yan Kwai La. Xin Yan Kwai La. Xin Yan Kwai La. That means Happy New Year. So Happy New Year of the Pig. That's our one announcement. All right. Happy New Year of the Pig. Okay. So let's also take just a few moments of silence now in the, the middle of our public worship uh, just to let Jesus say those things to us that only we would hear and that we would only say to him. Spirit of God, who inspired the scriptures and gave them fulfillment in Jesus Christ, open our eyes to the gifts that you entrusted to each of us and show us how to work together to realize your purpose in our midst. We long to live in a world where mutual caring and support replace selfishness and violence. Help us to honor one another's gifts and strive for the greatest gift of all, which is the embodiment of your love in each and every one of us. May our prayerfulness help us to better know and to live the will of God, and may our prayers be heard by God. Let us now join together in offering the prayer that Jesus himself has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the spirit of Christ, we give our best because Jesus has given us his best. 
Therefore, we share what God has allowed us to use, giving thanks for the joy of helping others and entering into a partnership with them. This is only the beginning of our offering, for we dedicate here our varied gifts to the work of Christ and his church, and that continues at our annual meeting. And we pray that our Christian generosity may help this congregation to continue the work of God in our world. Accept, O Lord, these gifts that we are now to place in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for each other and for all your world. We ask that these gifts for the generosity of these people may help us to continue your good work in your world. Okay, now we get to sing again. And this time, we are going to be singing Blue Hymnal number 259, Spirit of the Living God.
This morning, scripture's reading is uh, Psalm 19, the Psalm of David. If you'd like to follow along, it's on page 433 in your pew Bible. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The degrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accept to you, acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And our gospel for today is taken from Luke's gospel, chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, he returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. Jesus began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, Jesus went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. And the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed upon him. And then he said to them, Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So with words that probably sound a little bit more familiar, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Last Sunday, we canceled our worship service because of the weather. That threw my entire week all out of whack. Sunday did not feel like Sunday, and I know there was a Patriots game on. I know a lot of people's Sunday is based on, oh, there's football to watch, and I even got sucked into the Patriots because Sharon was watching in the other room making so many sounds that I had to come check it out, and I got sucked into like three minutes on the clock that ended up being like three hours, I swear. So even with football, Sunday did not feel like Sunday without coming to church throw in a three-day weekend because of Martin Luther King, and I was searching for what day it was all of last week. So if I remember correctly, I wanted to take my dog for a walk through the adjacent cornfield on that frigidly cold Sunday afternoon. I thought my dog would love romping through the snow and just galloping away. Instead, we only got a few steps into that cornfield 
And my, I think, overly pampered dog, who is a mutt that we saved from Arkansas, he, that overly pampered dog, stopped dead in his tracks and started pulling me back to the house because he was a little bit too cold and he didn't want to go pushing through all of the snow. And so a little bit of eight inches of snow, a little bit of cold, and our walk was over. So then I think it was Tuesday. And I decide to try again. And this time it's much warmer and also the snow had crusted over. My dog is enjoying his walk, just simply gliding along on top of the crusted snow. I'm crunching through the snow, eight inches of snow, drifts of snow. I'm huffing and I'm puffing. I have to stop to breathe. And my dog stopped in his tracks. He looks back at me and he says, like, what's going on here? I want to take my walk. I think I had either three or four heart attacks out in that cornfield, but I got to where I was going. It's so much easier to just glide over the surface than it is to crash through the snow. But crashing through the snow was the only way, the only way that I could get to where I was going. In the same way, it would be so much easier to just be able to glide over the top of all of the things that make life difficult, you know, if we could, to move forward just by skimming over the top. But most of the time, it's going to take work. And it's no different when it comes to our faith lives. So with this in mind, let's take a closer look at the psalm that Marty read for us this morning. I think it's a beautiful psalm. I even posted some of these words last Sunday to our Facebook page, along with some pictures of the sunset that Sharon took that night after the snow and the clouds had moved on and the sun was setting to the west. It was just beautiful. And I took those words that Marty read, and they're up on our Facebook page from last weekend. Now, it's a religious hymn. That's what the Psalms are. They are the synagogue, the temples. They are their religious hymn book, just like we have a hymn book. And so it celebrates, first of all, God's creation, and then it finishes with a celebration of God's law. So the first part of the Psalm is extremely old. I don't know if you noticed, but there is no mention of God's name in that first part. This is a religious hymn that is probably even older than the Jewish faith itself. We're talking about somebody's religious meditation that goes back 5,000 or more years. It could reach back to an ancient myth that taught that the sun god traveled across the sky. It wasn't the sun, it was the sun god. And to the ancient mind, it looked like the sun then settled into the sea. And this led to the myth that the sun god rested at night with the goddess of the sea and then re-emerged at dawn from her chamber. This is what is meant by the psalmist when he writes, In the heavens God has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course in the sky. The ancients looked at creation, and the wonder that they felt helped them to think about God. It's not the same God that we have, but it began that whole process of thinking about God when they watched the sun in the sky. Now, though, I'd like for us to consider the second part of Psalm 19. It praises the perfect law of God, and it calls upon us to also be, try to be perfect by keeping that perfect law of God. But there's a catch in it, and that one line reads, but who can detect the errors, basically, of God's laws? Who of us can detect the errors of God's laws? Well, in a sense, any one of us can Nobody here believes in the sun god who himself is rushing across the sky like a strong man runs its course with joy. Nobody here believes that the sun god then spends his night in the bridal uh, tent of the ocean. So you know who else didn't believe like that? The psalmist. He takes that old Mesopotamian myth and he changes the sun god to the god who created the sun. He was thinking. He took something that he inherited, he thought a little bit, and he changed it. So the psalmist wasn't honoring the old. The psalmist was honoring God in the presence. And the psalmist detected that error, and he worked with it. He crashed through the snow instead of just gliding over the top. Think about the synagogue. The synagogue is a celebration of the law of God. So the psalmist took something that was old, the idea that gods were the physical things like the sun. Then they celebrate God as the law. Jesus comes into that synagogue and he starts talking of the spirit, that me, 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 I am the fulfillment of the law. 
And so when they couldn't move the next step from the law to the spirit, to seeing Jesus as the Messiah, they stopped dead in their tracks and they missed Jesus. This Jesus who grew up amongst them as the carpenter. Our job as people of faith is to keep looking for God in the present, not only over our shadow to where he was in the past, but where is Jesus now? Where is God now? It'd be easy to glide over the surface like the dog in the snow, but we have to crash through the snow. And so today, as we remember Holocaust Remembrance Day, today we remember that the Allied troops went into those horrible places of extermination. We have to remember that there were good Christians that never said a word. We have to remember that for a lot of years, Christians have tormented the Jews because they think that's what we should be doing in Jesus' name. You know, long before there were extermination camps, there were crusades, and all of these Christians were going through Europe to you know, liberate the Holy Land from the Muslims. But on the way there, they tortured and they killed all kinds of Jews in the name of Jesus. Now remember from our Gospel reading, at the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus returns to the synagogue where he was brought up and where he worshiped God regularly as a Jew since his youth. He was so familiar with these people and their synagogue practices that he sits down and they offer him the scroll to read. Then Jesus depicts his opening ministry as fulfillment of the Jewish expectations. Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus is Jewish. And he sees himself in his ministry as the fulfillment of the Jewish faith. And yet somehow, perversely, Christians have long attacked Jews and they justified it in Jesus' name. The Southern Poverty, what is it called now? The Southern Poverty Law Center has shared this map. And they have all of these different hate groups. There's about a thousand different hate groups in the United States. And every time that they have a swastika, that means it's a hate group directed against Jewish people. They are in New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, and Massachusetts. Actual groups that are organized just out of their hatred for Jews. So the idea of the Crusades, the idea of the extermination camps, it's still alive and well and it's not far from here. So on this Holocaust Remembrance Day, which happens this year to fall on a Sunday, we need to remember that Jesus is always speaking to us. He's asking us to crash through the snow and not only glide over the surface of what has been accepted right along, sometimes like I was telling the two young boys here, sometimes we've got to stand up to be different. We have to allow other people to be different so that we can continue to move forward to a still speaking God and where he would have us go. That's the work of our faith and that's the excitement of our faith. Religion is not about the old. Religion is about the present. So just like we always at the beginning of our sermons, let us now finish with that same from the Psalm 19. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So now we can move on to our ascending hymn, blue hymnal number 434, God Be With You.
I do hope that you're going to stay afterwards for our annual congregational meeting when we can handle the business of the congregation. Uh, so we'll just move right into our benediction response so we can get into that continuing work of church. May the words of our mouths, just like the psalmist long ago, be acceptable in your sight, O God. May the meditations of our hearts bring us ever closer to the perfect love shared by our Savior. The Spirit of God guides us on our spiritual quest. We are anointed and therefore empowered to move forward. This hope is our assurance because God is the one who calls it forth. The grace of God that Jesus shares renews us so that we have the strength to continue the struggle to establish God's reign. So therefore, let us dare to go forth and live our faith as we must.